Hi, I'm Susan Lewis from WRTI, and I'm here with Kyle Smith. We're talking about his new album, The Singing Guitar. Hi, Hi Susan. Kyle. It's great to see you. Hi, Kyle. It's great to see you as well. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been fun uh, getting together doing this and, and actually to see any faces during this whole wacky time we're in is, is always a pleasure. <laughs> I know. It's kind of a, a new way of relating, but at least it's a way we can relate a little bit more than just a phone call, a faceless phone call. Yeah. Uh, so the singing guitar, it's by the choral ensemble Conspirare, and it features your new work, The Dawn's Early Light, performed by Conspirare and the Los Angeles Guitar Quartet. Also on the album is Nico Muley's work, How Little You Are, and uh, a piece by Rena Esmail mm -hmm. and Craig Hella Johnson. So how did you become involved in this project? Yeah, I have worked with Craig Hella Johnson uh, a few times before with Conspirare uh, and with uh, originally with his other group, the Vocal Arts Ensemble in Cincinnati. Now he's the founder and the director of Conspirare down in Austin, Texas. And he also became the director of the VAE in Cincinnati a, a few years back. And he approached me about doing uh, a large project with them, Canticle. And that's a, an over hour piece uh, that I did for the Cincinnati group. And that went off uh, really well. And they came out with a, um, with a CD uh, of that. As a matter of fact, we, we helped our producer win the Grammy last year for Best Classical Producer. I know, that's great, congratulations. Thank you. So Craig had been talking to me for a while. Now the Nico Muley piece, um, How Little You Are, is uh, for, uh, he wrote for Conspirare and three guitar quartets. And if my math is right, that's 12 guitars. They were, <laughs> they were all on stage, just a forest of classical uh, guitars. It's a terrific piece. And he wanted to, Craig wanted to put together a CD uh, uh, using Nico's piece, which they already had. So Craig asked me about coming up with something. Uh, interestingly, the, uh, the Muley uh, work is, is uh, settings of texts by women who were pioneers who traveled out west and they're really haunting texts really really uh, uh moving and he does a great job uh with them and so craig talked to me he says well how can we you know is there some way we can work with that maybe um getting a different point of view so i looked at lots of things and i came up with this uh, native american woman um sarah winnemucca who was of the paiute tribe in at that point in Nevada, and they since have been pushed out to the Northwest. Boy, she was the first Native American woman to write a book in English in the 1880s, and so uh, I took a text from that, and that became that became this work, The Dawn's Early Light. It was really uh, really taken with her writing, and a big reason for that is there's so many stories that she has in there, and they're just wild stories that, that you would never think of. So for instance, her grandfather, and I have a, a movement of this, is my grandfather jumped up. Well, her grandfather was uh, the chief of the Paiute tribe, and he actually worked with white soldiers, the uh, United States soldiers who were coming west, and he became a, a guide for them and there's lots of stories of him working with them. And so the, his tribe actually got to know uh, the white soldiers. And they had some um, really good uh, interactions with them and some really bad ones, too. That's all in the book. And I wanted to get kind of some of all of that in there to make up a, as, um, as uh, an honest an appraisal of, of it as I, as I could. And so the one story that became the central story to me was since her grandfather worked with the, these soldiers, he learned a lot of their songs that they were singing. One of the songs that he learned was, of all things, the Star Spangled Banner. Right. Well, <laughs> this is, so Sarah was born in the 1840s, 1842, something like that. So she grew up singing the Star Spangled Banner in her Paiute tribe, taught to her by the chief, her grandfather. 
And so that was, that's wild enough. But then later on, the, the soldiers came to their tribe and said, there was this other tribe that killed some white people. We want you to help us find the people who did this. Right. And they said, okay, we'll do that. So they had a war dance. And Sarah said, I'd never seen a war dance before. This is the first time. She said, the Paiutes are not fond of going to war. And so that's the name of one of the movements. The Paiutes are not fond of going to war. So they had the war dance. And at the end of the war dance, the lieutenant or the captain of the soldiers says, okay, now we're going to sing the Star Spangled Banner. Uh -huh. So the white soldiers start singing the Star Spangled Banner. And, and Sarah says, it was like, I never heard this before. It was completely different from what I was singing. I started thinking, well, what, what would it have been that she was singing? You know, so it was somehow different. And then I thought, well, I could do a new setting of the Star Spangled Banner. And what I didn't want to do was try to pretend to come up with like a Paiute version of the Star Spangled Banner. We actually don't know too much of anything about what Paiute music was, was like. And I wasn't interested at all in trying to copy, you know, come up with something like that. So I just came up with a new setting, a brand new setting. I wanted it to be, to really dig into the words and try to make the words uh, live. At the same time, seeing it through the eyes of this young Paiute woman, Sarah Winnemucca. So that's what I tried to do. Well, it's, it's beautiful. And it's interesting how you structured your piece because it does tell a story, Sarah, Sarah's reflections kind of bookend this story. And then those two episodes that you have, My Grandfather Jumped Up, has some violence in it. They well, were, yeah, he, he, was, he, he was really happy when he heard that the, the, the white people were coming because this was a dream of his, that the, the white people and the dark people, is what he called them, would finally become uh, unified. And he had a dream that way back in creation, they had been split apart and now they were coming together. So he was happy by this. But then another story is the soldiers came and, and killed a lot of uh, 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 Sarah's uncles and uh, who were, they were just fishing on the Humboldt River and they came and killed them. You know, it was horrible stuff that she witnessed. Right, so one, one movement is um, Native Americans being killed, the next references white people being killed. Yeah. And, yeah. and then the Star Spangled Banner, right. it's, it, it paints such a vivid picture. And it's so interesting because there are musical phrases which recall the Francis Scott Key yeah. version, which I, I understand Francis Scott Key originally put this to, to what was at one point a drinking song. Right, right. It was a British song, actually. Yeah, right. The words are the same, but the mm -hmm. music in your piece is, has a gentle power. It seems much more gentle because it starts with the idea of dawn and nature and it and you you just get a very different perspective on the same words the really interesting thing to me about it is it's the only i saw this one one time i haven't confirmed it but i'm pretty sure it's the only national anthem in the world that's a question and the question is boiled down can you see the flag is it still there and, and, and that's the anthem. And that's really odd when you think about it. And I thought, you know, it, it, there's no secret. There's this big controversy over whether we stand for the anthem, whether sports, uh, whether athletes are going to kneel, uh, you know, to, to make some kind of a statement. And so it's, it riles people up. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to jump into the middle of this. And my way of jumping into the middle of it is to set it to brand new music and try to bring back what it actually is, which is a question. I don't propose to give any answers to anyone. No one's gonna to listen to me anyway, and that's fine. But my uh, to really honestly ask the question, are we free, are we brave? Is the flag still there? That's what the anthem asks. And so I just wanted to honestly set it and I'll tell you, Susan, what happened was one of the singers in Conspirari came up to me uh, after, one of the uh, after one of the rehearsals. Actually, she talked to me after one of the rehearsals, but after the premiere, her cousins came to, uh, came to this. Now, she is uh, 
she she's a Native American. She's like half Native American or even more. And her cousins, uh, who are also Native American and very interested in the history of their people, were at the performance. And the singer came up to me and said, you know, my cousins, and she explained to her, and I thought, uh-oh, what's going to happen now? And she said, they were in tears. They, they think that you, you understood them the way no one else, that they've never heard it in music before, but just the way you said that, it, 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 like it, it got the entire universe of feelings, of mixed emotions, of all of that that we all have as, as Americans. So I was, I was really, really touched by that. Wow. Well, so how do you do that? What's your process? Do you start with a story and, and the text and then what was the role of the guitar, the cello and the voices? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the irony is that in the, uh, in the, um, the Star Spangled Banner movement, uh, I start with the cello and guitars and then I just take them out. And so most of it is a cappella. That's the only part of the whole piece is a 20 minute piece. And the Star Spangled Banner is like four minutes, whatever. That's the only part that's that's no accompaniment. So it's just the uh, it's just the voices. The um, yeah, writing for the guitar. So it's guitar quartet and uh, cello. And uh, I had a um, just a whale of a good time writing writing for them. I'd written for guitars, but many 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 years ago. <laughs> So it was it was something to try to get back to um, getting my my uh, writing chops to write for guitar because it's completely different from writing for you know piano. It's almost like playing three dimensional chess, writing <laughs> writing for the writing for the guitar. But it was a lot of fun. What do you mean? Well, you know, so so for instance, a piano you have all your low notes down here and all your high notes are up here. So, <laughs> Guitar, it's the same thing for each string, and there's six of them. So, you know, you have to you have to figure out everything's low to high, but they, but they go parallel, but not parallel. So it's uh, getting all. And I'm not a I'm not a guitarist. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, I was a very mediocre bass guitar player in high school, but uh, beyond that, I'm not a guitarist. But uh, I will tell you that the Los Angeles guitar quartet, they thought I was a guitarist when they got the music, which made, which was like the hugest, the hugest compliment anyone could give me. So I felt good that I had done my homework to figure out, you know, how to write well and make it idiomatic and uh, so that it sounded good. Going to your question about how do you do that, bringing those emotions, you know, into the, into the, uh, the national anthem, for instance, is you have to you have to forget everything about what you think you know about the piece. You forget have to forget everything about the tune that's in your head, and look at each individual word and treat it with the greatest respect. Uh, if I can't respect it, then I'm not going to set it to music. So I have to love every word and respect every word and take it um, and take it from there. Right. Well, I know you. You also are um, a lover of nature and in yes. other pursuits. So maybe that's um, the whole idea of the dawn's early light coming. It, it, you really do create some beautiful pictures uh, with your music. Oh, thank you. I, I had a hard time coming up with a title for this piece because it's so wide ranging. You know, I had these stories from Sarah, uh, some good, some bad. And aesthetically, at the very beginning, at the very end, are her words, I, Sarah, when Winnemucca am a shell flower. Winnemucca means the certain kind of flower that grows out there, shell flower, such as I wear in my dress. And then at the end, who will come and dance with me? Why I am so beautiful. She's talking about a ceremony that they would, the young girls would have. Uh, oh, come and be happy with me. I shall be beautiful while the earth lasts. These are stories, and again, it's the national anthem, but I want it to be kind of seen through her eyes. So, for instance, when I have the movement of um, while they were fishing, which describes 
her uncles and other people from the tribe who were fishing on the Humboldt River, mm -hmm. white soldiers come and shoot them, you know, uh, and, and kill many of them. And yet it's, it, it, it's told through the eyes of Sarah, this very young woman, and it's very matter of fact, and it says, um, my people did not seek to kill them, nor steal their horses. During the winter, my people helped them. Well, when music like that and a story like that evokes certain emotions in the listener now, when you're writing it, do you feel changed by your immersion in that story and by your creating the music to it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's inevitable, uh, which is why uh, I, I have to be very careful what I pick to set to music because uh, it will have uh, an effect on you. You know, you immerse yourself. It has to speak to you in a certain way. And a lot of times it'll speak to me and I don't know why it's speaking to me, but something about the text will attract me and I know I have to uh, go into this. And then it's a journey. Um, I don't know, uh, many, many times I know I have to set this certain thing to music. What the music is going to be for that, I have no idea. I mean, that was the case with the national anthem, setting, setting the Star Spangled Banner. I had no idea what I was going to come up with for that. How the guitars were going to be used, you know, how, how all that would work together, I had no idea. I, I was um, very cognizant of the fact that if I had taken the original tune, or the tune that we sing for the national anthem, and used that tune, but made a difference somehow that people would think I was making fun of it. And I didn't want that to happen. Um, I didn't want it to be a parody, you know, because it's not a parody in the book. Um, there are ways that you could do that, I suppose, but I, I wasn't interested in doing that. Well, considering the fact that the, the, the album and this, your work in particular is about people of different backgrounds, living in the same space, coming together and, and enjoying this song that we, we may know from different circumstances. There's a sense, at least I got a sense of hope and um, something that, that is really great for this time. I don't know if you set, set out to deliver a message or when you, end up with a piece of music like this and it has changed you, there is some, something you want to say or something you've discovered that you, that listeners will, will also appreciate. Yeah. You, you could say that th this is my answer to the controversy. Uh, what people do about the national anthem is their own business. You know, I have my own opinions about it, but um, the, uh, this was my, answer to the controversy when i saw this story in that book i thought oh i have to do this mm -hmm. this is good for this time it it's you know it's a controversy of course we can't escape that and people are going to have their own opinions but i felt as you said that it was um a way to help bring us uh, together and i have to say so uh we premiered it last year it was premiered in Austin, and then we went to Houston to premiere it, and then we recorded it right after it was premiered in, in Houston, and that's where the CD was made. Um, and at those two uh, concerts, uh, packed with, with uh, all sorts of people, person after person after person came up to me and told me how mightily affected that national anthem hit them, how strongly it hit them. And so I was, I was really, uh, I was really moved by people's reactions. Uh, yeah, well, great. Well, congratulations. Thanks so much for talking with us, Kyle Smith. Thanks, Susan. It was my pleasure. It's great to see you again. Great to see you.